This week on Lucky Fish, we continue our journey towards total energy independence and fit a state-of-the-art wind generator to our masthead. We'll look at the pros and cons of a masthead mounting position and wind generators in general. And we run into an unexpected problem. Some folks may ask, why a wind generator? Well, firstly they've come a long way in recent years with virtually silent blades and high efficiency three-phase AC generators. The unique benefit of the wind generator over solar is the ability to keep your batteries in a high state of charge overnight on anchor. Fridges and freezers can be run overnight and when the sun comes up in the morning the batteries are topped off in just a few hours. The downside of wind generators is they have moving parts and these need to be replaced occasionally. Each source of power has a unique application and by using solar, hydro and wind combined with our sails we can live on the hook and cruise indefinitely without the need for a diesel or petrol generator. In order to maximise the wind generator's performance, the obvious solution is to position it as high as possible. The higher you go, the faster the wind. When this is combined with the almost exponential power output curve of most wind generators, we see how a small increase in height can make a huge difference in energy yield. Fortunately on a sailboat, we already have masts in place that are completely suited to the purpose but placing it so high above the deck presents some problems. Servicing the unit becomes difficult. Shutting the unit down in high wind speeds needs to be done remotely. And there is the possibility of bird strike. Potentially very messy and not good for the bird. I was willing to live with the first problem. It was a small price to pay for the added efficiency of having it up there. Uh -huh. The second problem narrowed it down to the choice of just two machines. The Superwind 350, which uses feathering blades, and the Rutland 1200, which uses electronic shutdown, and the only unit that can be shut down this way indefinitely. The performance of the two units is similar, and I chose the Rutland due to its lighter weight. We had a mounting pole made locally and bolted it to the masthead. To reduce vibration, I inserted a quarter inch piece of rubber to test if it would be sufficient. That's the wind instrument wire and we have to be really careful with that one because Ooh, it was broken when it was installed the first time. That's a replacement. Just moving the wires from the half mast to the foremast and it's going to require an exit hole like this. So, just drilling a pilot hole, the wooden plug in the base of the mast comes up to about here. So hopefully we're going to clear it. To make room for the wind generator, we moved the VHF antenna, wind instruments and tricolour to the foremast. Then drilled an exit hole in the base of the main mast, large enough to take the 3 core 8 gauge generator cable. That went straight through and didn't go into wood, which is marvellous. Now, break out the big guns. Okay, right, that's it. Nicely done. We borrowed a fishing tape to run all the cables back in. I like your confidence. Mm. Yeah. What's there? You got it? Got it. Yay! <laughs> Make it look.
With the generator mounted on the pole and the mast cable installed, the next step was joining the cables. Heat shrinking, sealing the connection between the wind generator and the main cable for it, which runs down the mast. What is that white stuff you use? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just a marine sealant, 5200. And uh, it's a 3M product, pretty good stuff. Sticks weatherproof and all that. You want the coffee with the horseshoe this morning? No, coffee and horseshoe are fantastic. <laughs> Bring it on. Over here? Eat yeah, here? we need it because it's uh, winter morning. Crazy winter weather. We had frost on the boat this morning. Ice. Frozen stiff in Florida. Who would have thought? Couldn't believe it. Yeah. Freezing cold last night. It was freezing. There we go. There you go. So if it's interesting looking at the way these blades are bolted together, you'd think that this is the most uh, vulnerable area for the thing to, to destroy itself. Mm -hmm. But. Um, They've gone for a really simple fastening method, just a simple M6 machine screw and a nylock nut set in a plastic recess in the back of the blade. That's it, no washers. We obviously think that's sufficient. So I thought I'd just take you for a quick walk through the top of the uh, mast, the main mast, which we don't often see before it goes up. This is the uh, pole that we've had made for the wind generator. It's just a standard aluminium pole designed to fit the base of the wind generator. It's only around 22 inches long. We've got the power. Power comes down uh, into what is eight gauge uh, triplex wire. Uh, there's a splice in here. Uh, sealed with 5200 on the inside of the heat shrink. Um, back into the inside of the mast here, we've just used cable clamps here. There's a fair bit of weight in this triplex hanging down inside the mast, so we want to try and prevent that from slipping back through the hole. It's just well and truly stayed against the mast here to prevent any vibration, any wear in the insulation. Uh, so that's the base of the wind jenny and then next thing down we're just about to um, spray the blocks with silicon spray shortly <laughs> uh, just make sure these are running free good idea to do that every now and again so it's just been round and we've noticed some of these split rings and we've had them open up on us at sea on the deck level blocks um, so she's just woven stainless wire around the, uh, the split rings to make sure they don't open up and come out all the shackles are seized with um, stainless wire and then you know parts for wear on the way the warren rig the way the hounds work uh, where they go over these uh, hound fittings here we've just rounded those corners away to try and uh, prevent any kinks in the stainless wire uh, one other trick that we found for having the masks down once before when we put them back up again it was important to have the the uh, whatever you want to call these, the loops, they're like collars or uh, loops that go over the hounds to have these in line with the stay because um, this rubber grips against the mast and if it's slightly out of line you'll have a kink here where the stay finds its line down to the chain plate. So we put them where we think they ought to go which is for the top stays, they're the four stays on the back mast and they just pass in front of the hounds, the lower hounds which for the back stays and they, they pass out the back in this angle here so we just tape them to restrain and that tape will just break off when we tighten up the rig. That's about it. Other maintenance on the mask, we've just been around and checked for corrosion and any electrolysis where the stainless is boiling the paint off with the aluminium. There were quite a few little spots like that, we've just 
ground those back to fresh aluminium, thrown some primer on there and painted it with the International 990 which is a paint that's over the whole boat. So any time we fit any stainless steels against aluminium we're using that product Duralac which is a chrome, chromium barite or barium chromate or one of those things but it basically stops the electrolysis setting in between dissimilar metals. So all of these things are seated with that yellow stuff to help prevent that. And you can see it, yeah, basically anywhere you put a stainless fastening through aluminium, that stuff's critical and unfortunately very expensive. <laughs> All right, that's it. With the generator fitted, it was time to raise the main mast. Okay, that was a video. <laughs> this amazing group of people, Chris, Melinda, Curtis and Jerry, all dropped what they were doing to help. <laughs> we covered the mast raising and lowering system in last week's video, linked above. Just putting in a through hull for the wind gen battery 2 supply. Just an irrigation fitting, 3 quarter inch. Should take two of those 6 gauge wires. Drilled the hole with a hole saw, sealed it up with one coat of west. And now it uh, was a good sort of threaded fit, the hole saw for this inch and a quarter thread. So it taps into the plywood, into the epoxy, 5200, seal it, help seal it anyway. What are you working on? I'm connecting the battery 2 cables. The rotor was restrained from spinning until the charge controller was connected to the batteries.
How's it going up there? Once connected, Zaya went up the mast to remove the rope. We waited for three weeks before seeing enough wind to get it spinning. Now the bearings are run in, it starts charging at five knots. As a sequel to the wind generator installation, we found that as the machine ran in, it started to develop a small knocking sound. It seems to do it when it's depowering a little more than when it's powering up. I rang Rutland and had a chat to their technical guy and they seem to think that it means that one of the blades is loose. All the machines are tested before they leave the factory so they don't think it's one of the two bearings in it, which means that we have to service the machine right at the top of the mast. It's going to be a bit of a reach. The bosun's chair will probably get me to within a couple of feet of the hub of the okay. machine. So I'm just about to make a step and see if that works. I'm just going to machine up this piece of teak, which is off Brandon Gamble's element. It's one of the discarded parts of his boat, which he's kindly given to us. Ready for some drill holes for the bridles to attach it to the top of the mast. About one metre loop. Right up. Yeah, one of the blades is a little bit loose. I hooked myself to the generator pole using a safety harness. So go ahead and pull it up. Yeah. Lou dropped what he was doing on his pretty marbles trimaran to give Zaya a hand getting me up the mast. I then tied the step around the base of the pole. Look how slick. Yeah. After lowering the rotor to the deck, we tightened all the bolts. I don't know. It'd be nice to see, have them recommend that you pull that all the way in there, but yeah, I'd tighten on yeah. it, you know? It looks like there's one blade that's possibly loose. It's, um, you can't detect it's loose on the ground, though. When it was mounted on the hub, you could certainly feel a little bit of just slight movement in one blade, and the other two were quite tight. It's interesting that that would make the knocking sound. Isn't yeah, it? I would think if that Isn't main it? nut was off, yeah, that, that would. But you had to, that nut was tight, right? I mean, you worked hard to get that nut off. I know they say not too tight, but you want them tight. <laughs> <laughs> After refitting the rotor and waiting a few days for some wind, we were pretty disappointed to learn that the knocking sound was still there. Another call to Rutland suggested they thought it was a loose main hub nut this time. We had guests arriving in Nassau in two weeks and still a bunch of jobs to do plus 400 miles to sail. So we decided to run it as is and fix it when we have more time. The knocking sound became a lot less once the boat went in the water and only on certain wind angles. We hope to resolve the problem once and for all this year. As for the humming sound, it's vibration that is likely travelling past the rubber pad via the four mounting bolts and then down the mast. If any viewers have suggestions for a mount that reduces vibration, we'd love to hear from you. Well everyone, if you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe. And thank you for watching, and a special thanks to our patrons for helping make these videos possible.